All right. The, the best watercolor artist in the country, I always call him that, I don't even know if I'm right, <laughs> uh, Robert Fleischer, who's here, we're, we're, uh, we're separated, separated because we were born, uh, we were born at birth, we're brothers by another mother, it's not that, I hate yeah, that saying. Brother from another mother. I hate that. It's, it must but come, it's true. That comes from Detroit. We've known each other 43 years and <gasps> counting, oh don't my count. God. And, you know what he gave me today? Uh, another mask, a 95, the latest of the 95 masks. Because this one here, I was using this other piece of crap. Yeah, see, this one here. It's worn out. And it's worn out because it has, uh, well, first of all, you know, it has two strings on it. It's like a jock strap. You know, you don't want that on your face. And we're outdoors. Right? I don't. This is a fully enclosed screen, okay. and there's a nice breeze coming through. Yeah. Going right that way. Well, see, now, this thing here, it's I'm, It's not it's not a good mask because of no, this here, no, right? No, 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 no. So what do you got to have? See, Robert Fleischer is right now a model for this pandemic behavior. If you want to live, you have both, so both shots. I got both shots. And you know what really got him going, I think, more than anything besides the desire to live, uh, if I may say so. You can look at the camera here. I'm listening to you. I, I wanted people to look at you. <laughs> Robert Fleischer was kind enough in his own heart to go to Mount Sinai in Miami. I call it Mount Cynical. And he goes over to Mount Sinai and he starts working with the first responders mm. and taking pictures and sketches and... For nurseheroes.org. It's nurseheroes.org. Nurseheroes.org and it's a virtual art gallery and uh, you can find one of my paintings there uh, called The Hug and uh, it's, it's a watercolor. And you got one of mine here that I want to re refresh everybody with. You put me in the boat. I'm in the yeah, boat. Yeah, he's driving the boat. Yeah. With Ozzy, the bird. And Oh, yeah, Ozzy died, you know. She was, uh, well, uh, I'm saddened by the death of the cockatiel. But I think what happened was the, the, she never got a chance to talk. That'll kill anybody. <laughs> Especially when you live with me. All right, uh -huh. so this is the painting that you did. This is all we're all, we're in the same boat. Yeah, we're, in the same we're boat. all in the same boat. Now Robert Fleischer has put me prominently in there. Look at that. and that is a good resemblance actually. Mm -hmm. But you know, I met him when I was a 20th Century Fox, and he came over, and he was a. Uh, if you don't know the story, he was a day short on the Star Wars artwork for the making <laughs> of Star Wars. Story of my life. Yeah. And, and, but he's he's done so many great things through the years with rock and roll. Here, let, uh, me, let me help. Okay, thank you. Wait, wait, let me show you what a good friend he is. He even gave me these enveloped with the stamps on them to mail to friends. Oh. That's yeah. how that's how generous this guy is. You know, I mean, he he's been such a good friend. When I needed a job in in Connecticut, I needed to go and make good with the guy who owned W O R. And I was broke at the Buckley, time. Buckley. And so what happens is Robert gave me his credit card. What a fool. I bought your ticket. What's the ticket That's on right. the train? The and I went on the train and I had to make my amends. After nailing your shoe to the door. Yeah, saying, fill, fill these. these. <laughs> so you got to apologize for the guy. I did. I apologize. And then you got hired for 14 years. And I was there for 14 and a half years, more. 40th, 40th and Broadway. <laughs> And, and we, we had a wonderful, wonderful career there. But Robert's now, uh, oh, that's the air conditioner going off. It's, it has to be part of the uh, Okay, we'll leave it on. All right. I'll just move closer. You don't have to. you got to be able to hear this. Robert was is my brother from another mother. Is that what we're calling yeah, it? Is. Yeah. You are too, from me. So, you know, we, we have a different kind of, uh, of personalities and we have different talents. Well, Robert should be featured as the number one watercolor artist in the country, and oh, number one artist. And not only does he paint relevance, which is important in this generation, but he also has messages, which makes it relevant. Now, what's what would be, you get closer and I'll move back so you don't feel intimidated. I want you to be on sound here. Okay. What would be your message right now? Go ahead. Move up to, to to simply be kind and slow down, or slow down and be kind, whatever yeah. way you choose to do it. But that's what we need in this world right now. 
All right, so you would do a painting about that, right? Most of my paintings are about that. For the last, come July of this year, it'll be 49 years that I've been doing this. Any any police in your slowdown paintings? Police? Yes. As a matter of fact, there are a couple of police officers uh, in, uh, in my paintings. Yeah. Who, who knew? <laughs> yeah. New York City, 1984. And, uh, we got to show everybody your dog. Now, I, I did. She hopped out. She, oh, yeah. She got on. All right. Well, Mary is a, a strange name for a dog. Well, that was her name when I rescued her. Oh, really? So yeah. it's a rescue dog, right? So, as my friend said, oh, Mother Mary came to you speaking words of wisdom. Oh, wait be. a minute. That sounds like Paul McCartney. Yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> and, and Mary was really afraid of everything and everybody, and I showed her love, and now she's all about love. Now, Robert worked at Carnegie Hall for about 20-some-odd years. 20 years. And uh, Supporting the creative freedom so I could talk about in my work to be kind and slow down. It's a simple message you can say in a million ways. Well, wasn't it said by John Lennon? Yeah, for sure. Why did the Beatles have you, you your friends, well, not real close friends, but your friends with Paul McCartney? No, I, I met Paul a few times, yeah. and, and a great guy, totally genuine. He put his arm around me, you know, yeah. pre-pandemic. Oh, and that's what I'm saying. I'm, 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 trying, I'm trying to give a false picture. Yeah. Uh, but but the Beatles have had, how did they have this great heart to share way ahead of time? I mean, they were, they were our, we were the same age. You know, we're all young. And how did they have that? that it's just a miracle. What, 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 get closer to the sound here. It was just a miracle. Why? I don't know. How? Uh, how do they know well, all you need is love? Where did they get you know, that from? They, you know, from love. Yeah. Love has many, many friends. Many expressions, mm -hmm. yes. My favorite love song is I Want to Hold Your Hand. It was, and, and if you notice, a lot of the songs have the word you in it. Yeah. The songs were always about you. So that's, I think, the magic of the, a lot of the songs. Well, you have worked with every major artist, whether it's uh, uh, the Beatles or uh, who's that violinist? Isaac Stern. Oh yeah, didn't he own Carnegie Hall? He was the president of Carnegie yeah. Hall and became a good friend of mine. And he took your painting of the concert that took place, that never took place. Right. It, yeah. Leonard Bernstein and the Russian Orchestra. That's correct. Never happened, but but I, it took about four years to do it while I while I worked as a supervisor, and uh, and then just during the evening and all day I would work in my studio. And, uh, worked on a couple of commissions, kept working on the orchestra painting. And, uh, you know, if you go to my website, robertfleischer.com, you can see all the stuff. You know, not all of the 49 years, but pretty much most of it. So, you know, it's a body of work that, you know, will take time to be judged, and uh, I'm just going to keep on going. And, and you're doing yoga, so you do have a body of work. I, I am doing yoga because I have to massage my internal organs. Yeah. And it keeps me, uh, you know, when you're sitting at a, a, a table all day long, you got to move. Yeah. You got to move to keep moving. Well, I think the Bikram yoga was my my savior. That was my introduction to yoga. Yeah. But uh, I'm just doing simple yoga now, just to just to keep moving. I think the only reason why I have a good immune system is I stopped drinking and smoking and doing drugs about 40 years ago, and you were there. Yeah. You used to come to the meetings with me. Yes, and, they, and I still remember all of the, the meetings in Beverly Hills and then in the Valley, and you know, the, from the rich to the poor, the stories were always the same. And we had every movie star that you could think of, and, but we couldn't tell anybody. That's right. Could say that's Anthony Hopkins. Mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm grateful for you to bring me along because I don't drink alcohol. I never have. Yeah. But it, it was a great learning lesson to to understand, you know, human nature. That's what I've studied, you know, my whole life is how to how to put emotion into these paintings, and uh, 
I, I still carry that with me today. Every every one I work on. You know, the one I'm working on now is uh, probably called a guitar lesson because, well, it, I, it's hard to describe without it here, but it's an intimate um, portrait of a guitar lesson where they're slowing down and being kind and teaching each other and learning. Somebody said God gave us two ears and a mouth so we can listen to it. <laughs> I think it was Les Paul. Oh, yeah. They probably. had two mouths and one ear. <laughs> Les, that was another great honor for you to, to meet, hang out with Les, and have dinner with him. And, and he always said, when you write a song, and if you do a painting, whatever it is, but he said, if you write a song, you're the first one to hear it. And if you like it, chances are other people will too. And that wisdom is so simple, but it's true find a, a rhythm and a guitar that you like and you go with it. That's what Paul said about writing all of his music. And, and George too, and John. You, know, you built a guitar by hand, wood structure, mm -hmm. etc. And it's, uh, it's, it's a work of art, and plus yeah. a place. Yeah, no, I, I think it's a Hofter look-alike, but it's a solid body, and I was able to show it to Paul. Yeah. And he went straight up, man. <laughs> I want to share with the public here. A lot of people don't know, we use the cell phone, and we use the computer, and we have a, we use products made by Apple. And they came from Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak. Steve Wozniak had one great desire in life, which was what? Making money. No, <laughs> that was the other one, that was the other job. <laughs> uh, he, had, he had the desire to meet Les Paul. So I introduced Wozniak to Les Paul, and Woz wanted to give him something, but he had nothing that Les needed, because Les was an inventor, as was Wozniak. They both were inventors, and he said, "Is Les in the rock in the uh, uh, Inventors Hall of Fame?" He called me one day, and I said, "I don't know." I called Les. I said, "Are you in the Hall of Fame?" Uh, uh, inventors Hall of Fame. Inventors Hall of Fame. He said, "What the hell is that? I don't know. I got him in all these halls. I don't care about any more halls." Mm -hmm. And I said, well, Wozniak is on the board and wants you to be in that thing in Akron, Ohio. So we got him in there. He gave him a gift. Les was a great guy, humble, open, And so generous. was Wozniak. Yeah. And so are you. And so are you. He said, well, I don't want to go that far. <laughs> oh, no. Well, I can say that. But great, great artists. And yet, we're not looking for money. No, I don't we know. We like enough, but not, we're, not, we're not about money. Wozniak is not about money. Right. Les Paul left $115 million and he used to wear pay less shoes. No one had an idea right. that he had that kind of money. I, I would do the same if I got money. So it's not, it's not, the end goal is not money. For me it's emotion. Yeah. For me it's about connecting people to my work and if they can look at it for more than 30 seconds, I think it's been successful. But, but most people look at my work for a little longer than that. So that's one of the things I'm really proud of. And I will say that the people like my work and that's what's kept me going where the commerce of art, uh, it's hard to connect with because they have their own agenda. And I understand it, but I mean, I understand why they have their own agenda, but uh, I'm just focused on doing the work I want to do. And I don't compromise on what I want to say or, or how I want to say it. Uh, and uh, that's my main focus, is just to Well, the reason I, I brought all this up is because America is choking on greed. It's choking on money. And, you know, we need to have more love, unlimited, like Barry White used to say. Uh -huh. I love unlimited. He said to me, you remember what Barry White said to me, the famous words? Do you remember that? He said, you was dropped on your head by your mother when you was a baby. <laughs> You were dropped on your head? You dropped on your head. Oh, my God. <laughs> so this is it. We don't want any more uh, money than we need to get along and pay our bills. You can't and, take it with you. You know, and the other thing is to really share with each other everything that we have so that we can uh, build another life after this pandemic is over. This is the message. The message is, is that this thing is for a reason, you yeah. know? Yeah, the two questions that I have 
about this world is what are we supposed to learn from it and what are we teaching each other? And that's another element that I try to put into my work. And Joey, you, you know, with the, uh, the smiling school, the, the, you know, with uh, the theater, with your marquee, a fictitious play, let a smile be your umbrella, don't get a mouthful of rain. So, and it had Angelina Jolie. And I know a whole list of things, and at the end it's or not. So try to get people to smile, a little whimsy, and, uh, you know, I appreciate the air conditioning in the background. Yeah, I hope, we, I hope they can hear us with all this. We're being drowned out, you know. Oh, well, you know, that's the story of my life. We'll have to do this again sometime, maybe. Or just watch our lips. <laughs> watch my lips. Who used to say that? Um, Read my lips. That was George Bush. No. Oh, it was Dana Car Dana Carvey doing oh, George Bush. I don't know. <laughs> Read my yeah. Oh yeah, no, George Bush did say. George H. W. said no new taxes. <laughs> Read my lips. Read my lips. No new taxes, yeah. <laughs> All right, I want to leave everybody with the idea that I have a very good dear friend who's an atheist. And uh, I, I just want to salute him. I want him to know that I believe that God has me in his hand. He's holding me and looking at me, and I just hope that he doesn't want to do push-ups. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> Dennis, Dennis, you're talking about Dennis, right? Dennis yeah. Oh, no, no, don't do that. <laughs> we'll get in trouble. Oh. It's uh, Robert Fleischer, not very calm. <laughs> Push it off. All right, thank you, thank you.